everyone. Welcome. Hello, everyone. It's 5.01 on a Monday, Eastern Standard Time. I'm SLP. Welcome to Watch Me Work, where we meet most Mondays around this time on Zoom, and we talk with you about your work and your creative process. I've been doing this for show for about 15 years, um, more or less. We started in a little theater down the street from the public theater. Then very quickly after that, we moved into the public theater where we did it in the lobby for many years. And then when COVID came, we went on to Zoom. And uh, here we are, we love Zoom. Um, so um, basically what happens for those of you who are new or thinking we're gonna change it up this week, we work um, in unison for 20 minutes. And then we uh, turn it into a Q&A where you are invited to ask me questions about your work and your beautiful creative process. Um, and while a couple of things about that, while we do not have the bandwidth for you actually to present your work, it doesn't have to be writing, it can be any kind of work. We do have the uh, plenty of time for us all to talk shop, uh, answer questions, or just get into the, the deep, of uh, what it is like to be a creative person in this uh, world. And also the other important thing is we, uh, this is a, I wouldn't say it's a safe space, but it is a loving space. It is an encouraging space. It is a, a, a celebratory space. If you have the need to like trash talk or diss someone else's comment or anything like that. I know, I understand it's 2024. I'm alive in the world as well, but uh, we don't have the space for that. So I would ask that you do that over there. Can you see where my finger is? Can you see my hand? We can you see where I'm pointing off there, over there, like outside of this space. All right. So uh, if you go into that kind of mode, I'm just going to kind of move on to the next person. Um, that's not meant to be offensive. It's just to tell you who we are, who I am and what kind of community that I have been building, working to build with the loving help of HowlRound and the public theater for the past 15 years. But I'm bumped. So new work development in the public theater. Y'all want to say a few words or tell us how to get in touch should they have a question? Yes, thanks, SLP. Hello, everyone. Uh, so when you have a question for SLP about your creative process, please uh, raise your raise the hand function, the um, emoji on your Zoom. If you have any trouble with finding it, you can chat with us, we can help you out. Um, we'll start a queue and then we'll ask you to unmute and share your question. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Amrita. So here we go. We got 20 minutes to work together. Hey, Carol, she's getting some help. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Love you all, here we go.
All right, all right. Now comes the time when we take your questions about your work and your creative process. Is there anyone with the question? And as a reminder for anyone who joined us, you can use the raise your hand function on your Zoom. And we will start a queue and invite you to share your questions with us all day. Great. Uh, Caitlin, please unmute yourself. Hi, guys. Hey, Caitlin. Um, my question, thank you for being here again. And my question is, whenever you're going to write something that is about a person's real life and they're not around anymore, mm -hmm. where are some unusual places and spaces you'll go to find information? Hmm. Unusual places and spaces. Um, is, is this a person, um, you don't have to tell me who they are, you know, is this a person whose life you have some connection with? Like, oh, uh oh, am I, am I muted? Am I, was I muted? No, you, you're muted. Could we, uh, could you unmute yourself, Caitlin? Okay. How about now? Okay. Um, the person has been dead for over a hundred years. Yeah, yeah, but are many are they um do they live in the same did they live in the same country you lived in? Oh yes. Did they did they were they the of the same did they identify in the same general group that you do? You know what I'm saying? Oh yes. Great. So okay, so I would uh, an unusual place I would go. Uh, or, or I would suggest you go is into your imagination. Ooh, okay, that's a storehouse of 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 cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so I'm I'm guessing like after you've done some research, you know, um, um, did this person write a an account of their life or anything like that? No, never. Great, great. Uh, that it doesn't. I'm just. It doesn't matter. Um you sort of read what you feel that you need to read about them or about the, the, you know, the situation in which they lived. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into your imagination and imagine, you know, like read enough to feel like, okay, I can put myself into their shoes. I'm um, assuming they had two shoes or, or assuming <laughs> they had two feet things you know what I mean I can put mm -hmm. myself into their footsteps and I I know an, enough in general to put myself into their footsteps and then I'm gonna I'm gonna make up re with respect you know which literally means to look again um, one meaning of it anyway um, I'm going to imagine is that helpful it is thank you you're welcome all right. Uh, thank you, Caitlin. Um, hi, Kimmy. You can unmute yourself. Kimmy, how you doing? Hi. So nice to be here and see everybody. Love you. Miss you. <laughs> um, I, I um, have gathered some actors together to do a reading of my work. And thank you. I'm pretty excited and nervous. <laughs> This play has been like a bloodlet. Um, it's about a, it's very close to the bone. See if you recognize it. <laughs> it's about a menopausal writer who workshops her suicide note at a writer's group. <laughs> so, so, you know, write what you know. So <laughs> um, my friend, um, just graduated Columbia with a master's in playwriting. And so she's really very helpful. And um, she said, I'm very protective of your work and you need feedback and you have to um, control the narrative. And I said, well, how do you do that? So she told me a few things. One was a delighted listening feedback. You ask them if they're delighted by anything. 
and what they want to know more of. And then I have another friend. Uh, she wrote that book. She writes two books a year. She's a beast, Catherine Ryan Hyde. And I've taken her workshop. And she said that if you fall out of the piece, write it down and why. And if you come back, write it down and why. Like, when did you disengage? And then if there's several people in the group that also disengaged at the same time, then you know that maybe you have a hole. And I'm wondering if you have any other uh, suggestions or more specific things that would be helpful. And also, uh, since it's so new, it's only the third draft. Um, if I can, it's so weird to even say this, but I guess I really have to say it out loud uh, to, to help to me protect myself from people who, you know, sometimes people just can't help getting their hands in there. <laughs> Right, right, right. I hear you. So that's those are all great, great questions, Kimmy. And I'm so happy for you and proud of you. Um, I have to ask because it's a subject, you know, and you said write about what you know. So we're going to just do due diligence. Um, So the a, a writer, uh, someone's writing her suicide notes. So are you being, as they say, in, uh, properly resourced in terms of your mental health? Uh, yes, I called suicide hotline two years ago and they asked me if I had a gun and I said no. And she said, uh, can you call back in 15 minutes? And so that's what kind of sparred me off to figuring out I better figure out my own way to take care of myself. And I got hypnotized for depression um, shortly after that. And now I'm not depressed. I get sad like a normal person, but then it it passes like most things. Um, but I'm, I'm not suicidal. I don't have suicidal ideation anymore. Um, and I appreciate you very much thinking about me and asking that question. Thank you. Well, we care about you. We love you. I love you too. We want you, we want you to succeed. I Thank mean, you. and it goes for everybody on this call. And even those of you who aren't even calling in who I've never met. I mean, why not? <laughs> why not think loving thoughts about everybody but especially you Kimmy right now and we just wanted to make sure before we launch into blah 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 about writing because ultimately like you know um yeah okay so um some other questions that so other questions that might be helpful um just for you to think of not for them to ask necessarily is why did you write this what moved you to write this beautiful play that we love so much and notice the words after that the beautiful play that we love so much Start calling it that, you know, what yes. moved you write my beautiful play that I love so much or what moved me to choreograph that beautiful bit of choreography that I love so much, you know, just, just start calling it, you know, in the, um, what book is it? Hmm. The Odyssey. I knew it was that one. Um, so the Odyssey, you know, it was an oral, you know, before it was written down, you know, it was an oral thing. And one of the ways that they said that, um, Homer, who I guess like hung out around his friends and just was, was talking all the time. But one of the ways that they remembered the phrases is that they attached, uh, they remember the, the stories that they attached phrases onto the story. So part of the name of your play, when you talk about your play, should be the beautiful play that I love so much. See what I mean? Because that's what it is. And so it will, you'll remember it into being. Okay. Um, you know, so yeah. So, what moved you to write the beautiful play that I that we love so much? And um, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 no. That's not that's not for you to answer. I got that's it. I got it. For you to think about right, and yes. because then you'll remember you'll 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 remember what set you on the path, and you will see if that came across. Do you see what I mean? And that's something that you can share after the reading with your friends. Yes, thank okay. you. Your friends. Make sure and go with your gut on this one that everyone who will be involved in this reading is someone who loves you more than they love to see their own notes and ideas in your work. And they might be like an esteemed person, you know, oh, yes, let's invite them to the reading, you know, whatever. But if you get the feeling, you know, don't invite them. Just don't invite them. It's better to get uh, good feedback from wonderful people than um, 
feedback that might be harmful from somebody with some kind of title or degree or name, you know? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's what you can do to protect yourself. Also, you can, is it going to be uh, live? Is it going to be like them in your living room and them in your backyard? I mean, what's it going to be? My friend um, Paul invited me to do it at, at his yard as long as I brought lasagna. <laughs> and, and have, um, have the food eaten after the reading. Yep. Because they'll all be digesting and they might be sleepy. Uh, no food com comas, you know, or commas. Um, and uh, great. So as they're giving you feedback, uh, we hope that you have a notebook, you yes. know, you know, and that you write down the notes. It's also a great way just to distract, you know, just to like, and take down all their notes. You never know what, what might sound like an awful note on Monday might have something for you. And as you look at the notes, as you review the notes, think of the note, as they say, the note underneath the note, the note behind the note and kind of, you know, but, but you're inviting people in. So they're going to get in there. Yeah, I have a, I have a very uh, small group of people because there's some ancillary characters. <laughs> so one person can read all the, the little guys um, like a barista or a server. And um, I have like a handful of people that are just there. In fact, Lisa. I, uh, Lisa, um, that is on here that lives in LA, she's going to come. Fantastic. Yeah. How beautiful. So, oh, yeah. Beautiful. So she, she'll be there and like a handful of people that are really, um, that care about me and that are, uh, writers as well. Great. Or, yeah. Great. Great. Okay. Sounds like you're in good shape. Thank you so much. I appreciate you so much. I can't even tell you. I oh, love oh. you. Love you, love you. Thank you. Love you back. Who's next? Who's next? Yes. Thank you so much, Kimmy. Uh, Larry, please unmute yourself. Larry. I'm unmuted. Hi. Hello, Larry. It's so good to see you. Um, so good to see you. Uh, I, uh, as you know, I think you may remember, shouldn't assume you remember, but I teach... I get consumed, I stop writing, and then I have summer, and I come back to you. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. So I have this like long time uh, Sisyphean Sisyphus play that I've been working on forever. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided I have a sabbatical actually this time, so I'm Ooh. off longer exactly. than usual. Lovely. And I decided I'm going to do a workshop so that it obligates me to finish right so i've forced myself to have a, a date and so i've been working on the play and of course you know when you leave and come back it's like what um who wrote this so um i'm trying to sort of um if i were to you know to get into my today play what's my my today play mm -hmm. and um one of the things I discovered is I have, you know, a lot of the, the, the plays based on Albert Camus, the myth of Sisyphus. Oh. I always sort of had Camus as, as kind of a character, but sort of like, I wasn't really, I had a character named Albert, but I wasn't really going to call him Camus. I wasn't really uh -huh. going to get to that. And I started to discover as I've been working on it, that there's a lot more overlap in what I've created for this character and the real guy than I realize then I gave myself credit for and I um knowing that you sort of have incorporated real people into your play and in in a, in a way I consider free I'm having a little trouble knowing like how far in the weeds to get in terms of research and digging into the reality of this person and just like let the happy accident that there's some overlap to the real guy and the way I've been representing him mm -hmm. to let that be enough. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as someone who sometimes overcomplicates, sometimes all the time overcomplicates. Um, yeah, I guess I just was interested in your sense of obligation uh, in terms of using real people, historical figures, whatever, and how far to go and when when to stop and when to just 
make them your own and should I call him Albert Camus? Shall I just call him Albert? I love that he, you're calling him Albert or Al. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, Larry, you, you, you're, 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 you're very aware. You, you, you do have a tendency to go, yes, and uh, things are going well. It's time for me to write. Now, instead of writing, I'm going to make it complicated. Yes. And we love you for that. <laughs> and stop doing that. Stop it. Just stop it. Just oh, come on! Your Al wants to to write, and it you you need to. I know you need to get back on the highway. You know what I mean? Because you're you've been a wonderful teacher, and and you now you need to get back on the highway. And um, yeah, when you when you see yourself, my, my dear husband, you know, this morning he was like, yeah, you say you, you complain about the same thing all the time, you know. So I said, oh, really? He said, yeah, it's this, that, and the other. You know, I said fantastic so uh, i just i just wrote down like i wrote down a list like bad loops <laughs> you know mm. i just wrote them down and i put them on the wall and i'm like oh if i hear myself going this that or the other i'm gonna go ah, that's a bad loop i'm gonna let it go so larry if you if you know that you overcomplicate and you feel like hey larry you know says the other larry hey larry you're overcomplicating <laughs> like what's your last name larry Biederman. Biederman. Biederman, did you mm -hmm. say? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I have a friend who refers to himself as a, in his last name, by the last name when he wants to talk to himself. And he kind of has a little angle on his head. I won't tell you his name because then you might know who he is. But then he goes, huh, you know, <laughs> so you go Biederman, right? So Biederman, this is your other self talking, Biederman. Stop. Mm -hmm. Do that. Stop being complicated. Biederman, Biederman, just write it. Just go forward, Biederman. You can call him Al. There's even a whole song about you can call me Al. Paul Simon has given you permission, Biederman. <laughs> it's okay. We don't have to have it be just like Albert Camus. Even if you knew everything about Albert Camus as ever written, it wouldn't be enough like Albert Camus to satisfy like reality. Right? Right. Okay, so you can uh, like like we suggested with with Caitlin, you can go into your imagination, and Al can be Al. His last name could be Biederman. <laughs> it really can be like that. It could be Biederman, and he could just he could be more like you than Camus. And I know that rhymes, but it wasn't meant to you know what i mean let him be more like you than albert camus because albert camus like i mean you know what is it french right yeah i mean you know <laughs> yeah. i'm married to a german i know it's bad but you know but oh, i'm not dissing french people i'm just saying you know he's been he's been but we've never met al biederman done done yeah and make a list of your like loops you know like that's great and you just go like, hey, Biederman, stop. And well, you laugh. Funny you, have laugh. It's funny oh. you call them loops because of the Sisyphus rock rolling. Right, 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 right. 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 Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. It's very, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the, I mean, it must be the loop that, like, he, he was probably like, I know I can. I know I can. I know I can't. Oh, darn, I can't do this, can I? <laughs> and that's it just rolled right down the hill again. Oh, yeah. I know I can, I know I can, I know I can, I know, oh, I can't really do this. Who am I kidding? It rolls it down. You know, so his who am I kidding? I can't really do this. That's one of his bad loops. You know? Stealing, stealing I, want, I want to know about Biederman. Okay. Al Biederman. Okay. I appreciate you. Thank you. We appreciate you too, Larry. <laughs> what fun. I want to read that story, Al Biederman. Al. <laughs> his name is just Biederman. Beater man, beater man. I don't know what beater. What is beater? In uh, B E I D E R. I've heard. I've heard. So I've been told better man and honest uh, man. Beater praying the praying man, beaten is mm. to pray. Uh, bet um, Bessa is better, but beater man it could be like to beaten is to pray. So the man maybe maybe I don't have my you know I don't have my husband here to correct me but anyway. <laughs> beaten is to pray um so it could be um 
it could be the the man who 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 you know prays you know not praying on somebody but praying like right a prayer, a prayer man a praying man mm -hmm. cool that's great cool yeah i i just had a thought in between uh last monday and this monday i just wanted to ace i know you're, you're kind of me thinking about your question from last week um um about you know value and everything and i just wanted to tell you and anybody else who's wondering about these things we 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 all of us look on these institutions to sort of rate us you know i mean this is not kind of what you were saying but you you know you're a value you're not so much and all this kind of thing and if we get in then we're valuable and if we don't get in we're not and if we get in the season or whatever we're valuable and, you know, we have to recognize the gatekeepers for who they are. They're not the ones with the real power. I was meeting with a friend today or another writer friend, um, and just we were reminding each other that writers have tremendous power. Creators, creatives have tremendous power. And I just want to remind you, Ace, that regardless of what you write, and it might be you might be writing about people who don't look anything like you or, you know, identify anything like you. What, whatever you create is beautiful and has tremendous value. And we don't need to look for value to be conferred on us by somebody over there. You know what I mean? I just want to remind you of that. Whatever you write is beautiful and valuable. Whatever it is. Because that comes from your beautiful, powerful wellspring. That was given to you by the beautiful conglomeration of people who brought you into this world. You know what I'm saying? So you've already won and don't, don't look to them for, cause you know, they don't know. They, they really don't. Okay. But you know, don't you? Yes, you do. You do. You, yes, you know, you know, I know, you know. Okay. So I was just thinking about that in between the Mondays in between the Mondays. That's beautiful, SLP. Thank well, you. It's true, isn't it, though? It's true. It, it, it's not to, you know, the, the middle, the people who set themselves up as the ones who are going to give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a meh, you know, or just tell us that we don't rate and all that. Um, you know, they tell us we don't rate, but we're the ones who create. We need to, right, yes. right, mm -hmm. right, yeah. So, um, and uh, so, yeah, and when all if that doesn't make sense, play the harmonica. <laughs> that's what I was, that's what I'm doing. I'm learning, my son plays the violin very well, so I decided to learn uh, one of his tunes he learned a long time ago, Minuet Number no. One by Bach on the chromatic harmonica because. Because, you know, everything doesn't, you know, so work, you know, when I say watch me work, it's a very, uh, you know, the work. We have to, we, we work because we want the creators, uh, the creator, the big creators to know that the transmission is happening, right? You know, or as Horton said, we are here, we are here, we are here. Same thing, so. We do have about 12 minutes left if anyone feels the impulse, the desire to ask a question. Oh, yes. All right. Simone, please unmute yourself. Hey, Simone. All right. Hello. Hello. Uh, this has been enjoyable. And thanks for the uh the, the offer of the 20 minutes to sit sit down and put my butt in a seat and work. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I've been dreaming up, um, recently been dreaming up a project of um, writing about a true story about um, a woman who who raised other people's children kind of mm -hmm. thing. And, and I'm, I'm, so now I'm sitting here trying to figure out if I want to make it realistic or kind of give myself some creative license to 
I don't know, have a little more fun with the character and not or the, the, the story and not just be so, um, I don't know, what's the word? I don't want to do anthropology, right? I don't want to do like, this is a biography, the scripted thing. So, so that's mm -hmm. what's, what mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking of. It's like, how do you, what, what, how do I, how do I spark that creative thinking to, to, to imagine this in a different setting or a different mm -hmm. place or something? Uh huh. That's a great question, Simone. Is she is are they? It's a woman who took care of someone else's children. Is that what you said? Yeah. Is she someone you know? You can you can unmute yourself while we're talking. Just go ahead and unmute it. It's okay. We can wait. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I couldn't unmute myself. Uh. Yeah, but she's older. You know. See. You know. Senior. So I think there's there's some pieces that I can probably get from the story, but not everything. Um, yeah, 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 I'm just, you know. just wondering, is she someone she's someone in your family? I mean, what kind of allegiance do you have to her? Because we're talking about you said you want to be, you know, you want to use your imagination more, not do anthropology. So I'm wondering what ties you to anthropology or the acknowledged historical record. That's what I'm what I'm really asking. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because I tend to like creative nonfiction, so that tends to going go straight straight ahead tends to be my my norm, and I'm trying to um, exercise that other part of my creative brain. If that makes sense. Okay. Um, fiction, fiction fiction is not my usual go to. I guess that's the better. Right. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can. I mean, is she? But she's living. This person. Okay, right. Well, sometimes you see what I'm saying is there's there's a tie that, that binds you to some sort of uh, uh, authenticity, reality because she is living and you know her. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so it, you know, I mean, you, you, I mean, you're respectful. You're you feel obligated. You want to get it right. Maybe you don't want to just make up. I mean, like we say on the corner, you don't want to just be making up shit about somebody you know, right? I mean, like that, right? That's not what you want to do. You want to um, uh, be mindful that they're living, you know, and that they're a, a human being. Um, do you have to make, do you have to write it about her? No. Oh, great. Okay. Well, then respectfully bow out of that story and and just make up a story. You can make it up about anybody then, you know, any, does she live in this time period or does she live mm -hmm. before? Great. So you can just make it up about you know, I don't know, pick a new, another name and strike up a conversation with a complete stranger who happens to take care of somebody else's children. Mm. Not a real person. Again, mm -hmm. your imagination. Yeah. You know what I mean? Does that help? Um, you can interview her. Imagine, where, yeah. do you live? where do you live, Simone? I live in Austin. I'm Great. From New York, okay. yeah. OK, so you just say you went to one of the beautiful parks in Austin. Right. And you were sitting on a bench and there she came, uh, you know, with the stroller and the baby was asleep or the toddler was asleep and you struck up a conversation with her. She, you know what I mean? So she's in your imagination. You don't have to uh, adhere to any factual details about someone, you know, mm -hmm. and ask yourself, what does this character want? Um, have you ever read the book um, uh, Lucy by Jamaica Kincaid? No, I actually haven't. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, Jamaica Kincaid's a great writer. Yeah, she and, is. Um, yeah, she is. She's great. And you know, I mean, it, it's going to be nothing like your your book, your what you're writing. But mm -hmm. um, it's a story about someone who, uh, yeah, I believe is take care of someone else's children. You know, just to mm -hmm. get your mind to start working. You know, where is this woman from? Was she born here? Um, what is her education? Interview her as if she's somebody for real that you're meeting, but she's not going to be somebody for real. And what does she want? Think about what she wants. Again, we do the geometry. Um, in geometry, actual geometry, we say two points make a line, right? Mm -hmm. Make mm -hmm. a line, right? That's true in geometry. And in narrative, Two points where the character is and where they want to go can make lines of dialogue. So you can use that desire. That's basically your mining desire 
What does she want? What does she want? What does she want more than anything? What's she going to do to get it? And she'll start talking to you. Hopefully she's in your imagination. Is that helpful at all? That That is, it does help a lot. Um, yeah, I think even just, yeah, that sitting down and imagining having a conversation yeah. with someone at a bus stop and, yeah, and getting the interesting parts of their, their life and their story and, and going from there. That is yeah. helpful. Bus stop, even better. That's mm-hmm. better than a park. park yeah. No, no, no. I'm serious. Bus stop is even better because, you know, there's going to be a bus that she lets go by. Mm-hmm. You could rather talk to you than go back to work. Yeah. That could be fun. You know, yeah. also the at the core of sort of this work, this thing that we call work or, you know, imaginative imagination, the process of using your imagination. There's fun. It's fun. Allow yourself to have fun. You're just going to sit around and talk to yourself and make up stories. You know, did you do that? Did you allow yourself to do that when you were a kid? But um, some, I think uh, the characters, the cast of characters that I run into throughout my whole life are always interesting enough. So, uh huh, great. So I have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, no, I definitely can use imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, just get, 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 just interview this woman. Give her a name, you know, give her an age, give her a, an ethnicity or a race or, you know, just you can make her up, you know? Yeah. And if you want to then attach some of the things you found onto this real character, you can, but you don't have to because they're separate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, that's helpful because like I said, I, I, I found that it was, finding the spark of, of some stories and I was like oh that could actually make a really good story and then I was like but I don't you know I didn't necessarily want to do something um, head on but also um, wanted to give myself license to to use the the fiction part of my brain and, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. being creative and making up the story as opposed to always feeling like everything needed to be tied up in a nice neat bow yeah um, what do you do for your your day job work in education mm-hmm is it is there like uh are you an English teacher or no I was an English major <laughs> yeah yeah yeah. College. yeah 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 sometimes you know I mean in education it's you're one of the heroes of the world because education mm-hmm. is really important but um you know the the feeling of needing to get it right you can let go of that and tying it up in a neat bow you said you know that kind of thing um you know um yeah yeah you can just let yourself enjoy making up stories there's a lot of power in that you know you can give yourself permission to access your power you know thank you you're welcome thanks great question thank you Simone I just really appreciate this group. I'm just enjoying smiling at everyone right now. It's a nice moment. I feel like we're in in real community. Well, we are about two minutes away from six. There are, is a is a short question, or we can we can do a little two minute wrap up and go from there.
<laughs> I believe there's a request SLP for the thought of the week, the watch me work thought of the week. Oh, I, um, yeah, it's, it's what I was saying d directly uh, to Ace, but to everybody, um, your value, you know, you're valuable already. And that's something you can tell yourself. Also, if you want to make a list of, you know, three of your bad loops, the shit that you keep telling yourself that's getting in the way of you doing your beautiful thing, make a list of them. And every time you catch yourself saying it, sad, let it go. You know, you'll get in the habit of seeing that as something you can let go. It's like if you didn't like pizza and every day the door rang and the guy said, pizza delivery, and you're like, that's not for me. Like that, just get in the habit of saying no thank you to the the uh, less than helpful things you say to yourself that keep you from doing your beautiful things. Um, you know, because yeah, you're the only one thinking in your mind. You know, six o'clock. It is six o'clock. Are we going to be back next week? I, I did not look at the schedule. All good. All good. We are back ne next week. So we're back on the 17th at 5 p.m. Eastern. Fantastic. We will see you then. Thank we you, everyone. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for joining. Bye-bye.